Well, I'm excited to share with you what the Lord has put on my heart. Um, this is a super personal message this morning, so we're just going to get right down into the personal nitty-gritty of living today. I hope you're ready. And um, I feel like the Lord has placed on my heart this, this message. I've been praying this week and just seeking the Lord on, Lord, where would you want me to go? You know, where, where, what do you want me to speak into your people? And I felt like he shared this thing, and um, it's just kind of been being birthed into me, so I'm not even certain exactly how this is going to take form, but he kind of gave me kind of the, the simple framework of it right now, so I'm going to share it with you. So we're going to talk about what we believe and why it matters as a church, and I felt like the Lord spoke seven things that we believe in as his body. And I'm going to read these off to you, and we're going to kind of investigate in these next up-and-coming Sundays exactly kind of what these mean and how they apply to our lives. And the really interesting thing was, is like, as the Lord gave it to me on Wednesday, as we were in church, like, I went to grief group on Thursday, and all of a sudden, the grief group thing was touching on a lot of these things. Isn't it amazing how God brings confirmation at times? I'm like, man, they're going to just think I'm stealing this stuff from the video. <laughs> and it's not the same. But it was just confirmation to me, and it was blessing me. And then this morning, at the same time, I haven't heard that song sung, but, you know, just speaking what we believe. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I mean, just speaking those things and, and cementing them into our, into our hearts. This is what I believe in. This is what the Bible tells me to believe in and to trust in and to build my life off of. Amen? And, um, and you know what? It's worth fighting for. Amen? It's worth making a stand and saying, no, I do believe that. It is truth in my life, and I, and I stake that claim right now. So, with no further ado, today we're going to be talking about the first one is, can I hear the voice of God? So we're going to be exploring that, that statement. The second is, God's sovereignty in my response. We're going to be talking about the sovereignty of God in our response to it. The third we're going to talk about is miracles, are they for today? The fourth we're going to talk about the road of repentance. The fifth we're going to talk about can I know the will of God? The sixth, under authority, we're going to talk about authority. And seven, service and sacrifice. So these are things I just feel like the Lord was just speaking into my heart that we're going to explore what these mean in our life and how we can apply them and how we live our lives according to what God says about these things. And I'm really excited. So um, today, and I'm going to actually, I'm going to open in prayer, but today we are going to go and we're going to focus on that first one. Can I, and, and, and we really need to get personal because this truly is a personal message from, from my heart. And I really want to get personal with you guys. And you know, sometimes it gets uncomfortable. When we start getting personal and we start asking some real personal questions, people can immediately step back and say, whoa, don't touch that. I know in counseling a few times, you know, you have people in, in your office and they're, they're struggling with something, but you just like, in a moment, the Lord just speaks and, and it's like an uncomfortable question, but it's a necessary question. And I really believe like the Lord's going to challenge us to today if we can hear the voice of the Lord in our lives, in a personal way, in a real way. I know Nick Piccolo talked about that last week. He, he said that the Lord spoke to him. And sometimes in venues that can get a little weird, but the, the, the reality is, do we believe this? Amen? Amen? So Father, I do. I thank you, Father, that your word can lead and guide us to truth. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that um, today we would just be open to, Lord, what you have to say on the matter. Lord, it's, it's not what 
I, I want to say or what I, what I think I should say, Lord God, but we really want to know what you have to say on the matter. I just pray, Father, that just your Holy Spirit would be able to, to work and to press us uh, further and farther than we could ever imagine and just place us in, into, Lord, Lord, the deep areas of the move of your Spirit. And Lord, that it would produce blessing and life and virtue, Father. I thank you for it. I thank you for these people. And I just thank you that your heart is motivated, absolutely motivated to produce your blessing in their lives today, living here on this planet. And I praise you for it. I just ask that you would move powerfully in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we go, and, and I, too, I do really want to be real with you guys this morning, that this, this message truly is real to me. It really is, I'm being honest, it's a personal journey that I'm on. It's an absolute personal journey that I'm on. And I'm going to tell you just honestly that I wrestle with this at times. You, ever had, you guys, you ever have to fight for something in life? <laughs> no? Because, you know, if, if, if th- th- these things come easy for you, I really, I'm telling you, I might want you to come up and share a little bit, and I'm not putting you on the spot. But for me, in my experience, I have to fight. And sometimes the things that are the most valuable in life are the things that we fight for. You know what? I fight for my marriage. Because it's valuable to me. It's the most precious thing that I have on this earth, apart from my relationship with Jesus. But we're talking what God has blessed me with. My, my, my relationship with my wife is worth fighting for. Amen? My children are worth fighting for. This church and the relationships within this church are worth fighting for. Amen? And, and even in my own life, like I know that the enemy knows that there's power in, in hearing my Creator's voice. Maybe not audibly, but internally, just Him speaking into my heart. He knows there's power in it. And I'm telling you, the Word says that we don't wrestle, wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness and spiritual forces of wickedness. That's what the Word says. So there's going to be a battle. And when, we, when we're going to make a stand for what we believe in, the enemy is going to test that. He's going to test that. And he's going to try to push us off of these places that God has already secured for us. And we have to stand and we have to fight for what we believe in. Because if it's faith, if it's, if it's truly faith, we're, we're, we're willing to die for it. You'll die for what you believe in. Amen? You know, we, we, we see this in this country. There's a lot of people that believed in this country and they laid their life down for this country because they believed in it and they were worth, it was, they were willing to lay the sacrifice down. And the same is true even in our spiritual journeys at time where God's going to test and say, are you really truly, do you really truly, Josh, believe in this thing? And are you willing to fight for this thing? And I believe that that's where, where God is, has me in this journey. And, and I'm just being honest with you. At times, it can feel like, you know, like God's voice can be distant or God's word can even be a little dry at times. But I know that that's where the source is. And I'm going to continue to press in on God and, and believe that God will bring forth what he needs to in my life through those avenues. Amen? Amen. So I just want to be honest with you today. I don't want, and, and, and if it's personal to you, um, praise the Lord. You know, I hope the Holy Spirit speaks to you through this. You know, because there are battles that are happening, I believe, right in this room right now. Some of you, maybe you've been questioning um, some of the things you've, you, you, know, you hear on a Sunday service. But God wants us to really come to that place and space where we can say, no, you know, God, you worth, you fought for me. You gave me your son. You, you don't owe me anything at this point, just like what we sung about. 
God, you have blessed me beyond whatever, whatever I could even, even imagine or fathom. And I'm just going to truly trust in what you say is truth in my life. Amen. And I also know that this gift of, of, of his voice is one of the most important gifts that I've ever been given. It's, very, it's the very source of life and victory in every area that it touches. Man, there's times that I'm defeated and I'm beat down and I'm questioning even, you know, like, Lord, why am I in this thing? But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just kind of steps in and just one word can literally just kind of start to just, just wash that away and cleanse me of all of that condemnation or that false guilt, or whatever it may be, or, or even doubt, or fear, or whatever it is, it just starts to wash it away. His voice starts permeating that area of my life and starts to breathe life back into that area. And I, and I know that that's true in so many people's lives. I remember I heard uh, one of, a dear sister uh, of mine, when she was asked once, she goes like, you know, like this Christian thing, like, what keeps you in it? You know, what keeps you in the Christian thing? Like, how can you just, just kind of seem like you can just kind of navigate the storms of life with, 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 with excellence? And, and, and this, this uh, woman of God said, I'll tell you what, prayer. She's talking about just that fellowship that she had, that, that secret place that she could go to on a daily, uh, even, even momentarily moment just to just go and, and just to step into his presence and, and to hear his voice and to spend time with him. And I truly believe that's true in all of, of God's children's lives today. So we need to answer this question. Can I personally hear his voice? Some denominations or some would, would, would boil it down to two things. There's a lot of different ways of looking at this, but I think it boils down to two, two separate categories. One, some people say that there's a sufficiency in the Scriptures that God speaks to us today through His Word and the quickening of the Spirit, like, or the quickening of the Scripture. So the Holy Spirit will quicken us to the Word of God. But that's the only way that the Lord will speak to us. We can't actually hear him speaking personally to us, but we can hear him personally speaking to us through his word. And is that true? And I had to really just ask, like, the Lord, was this just a time that was reserved for biblical recordings? And I really, I really struggle with that. Now, I do believe that God does speak through the sufficiency of his word and through the quickening of the spirit. I do believe that wholeheartedly because you know when I read the word of God sometimes, all of a sudden I've read that verse a thousand times and all of a sudden it becomes fresh and new to me and I'm like, you know, like man, that was there the whole time? How did I miss that? Or even somebody else speaks it or you know, or you hear an awesome message from, from a pastor or a friend or a brother or sister that says, oh, I, you know, that, that really speaks to me in this way. And you start to look at it differently and it's like, whoa. And it just, just all of a sudden it's illuminated. And God speaks to us that way. But I don't think he reserves. I believe even the Bible teaches us that he doesn't just reserve that venue to speak to his children. Because the Bible basically makes this this example of Christian living that patterns how his children are just supposed to listen to him. Even, even in the small details of life. I even know sometimes in the morning, and it's crazy, but like if I'm getting ready for church or something, I'll say, okay, Lord, what tie do you want me to wear? <laughs> I don't do that all the time, but once in a, you know, at times I do. And you know what the funny thing is? Them times are usually when I get the most compliments on my tie. <laughs> you know? And when I just pause and I say, God, just, just, just lead me. And I don't hear like a thundering, booming voice from heaven saying, 
thou art the red tie. <laughs> but like, I just feel like at one, you know, sometimes he'll just be like, you know, that, that's the tie to wear today. Sometimes he's like, you choose. But, um, but I just, I truly believe that the Lord speaks into our lives. We can't find in Scripture what tie to wear or, you know, or what person to go invest your life or your ministry into today. But the Holy Spirit knows. And the Holy Spirit will reveal those things to us. Amen? And the Bible shows us that pattern. Even Jesus shows us that pattern as an example for us. He says, everything that you see me do, I do because I see the Father doing it. I go into the Father's presence and I let him lead and guide my life. Every, you know what? He was, he was a man on a mission. And I don't mean just a mission to, you know, wherever, Samaria or, or, or Nazareth or wherever he was going. Every detail of his life was a mission that he worked and was allowing the, the, the Spirit of God to move him and to direct him into those areas where it mattered most to the Father. And I believe that even in our lives, if we become sensitive and just pause and, and create space for him and say, God, I believe that you want to talk to me. And I want you to lead my life and show me how to live this out the most effectively for your kingdom. He'll honor that. He truly will honor that. Amen. And the book, of, the book of Acts is full of those examples, Acts of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus even says that he gives us this paraclete, or the parakletos, which is the Greek word for the Holy Spirit, that is the one who comes alongside and helps. It would be kind of silly if you have a helper and he wasn't unwilling to speak to you, right? He wants to speak into our lives, amen? And even David, think about David, even if you go to the Old Testament and, and Psalms 51, when he's caught up in this sin, the first thing he pleads with God not to take from him is what? The Spirit. It wasn't like, God, don't take the word from me. Don't, don't take my friends or my church from me. You know, them are important, but the most important thing, you see him pleading with the Father saying, God, Anything, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. It's literally life breathing into me. I need that Spirit. Without it, I cannot function. And we have to have that mindset, as David does, to protect that. Christ has purchased this privilege for us. We don't deserve it. I can tell you that right now. I don't deserve it. But Christ has secured that privilege of this relationship that we have with him. Amen? So, with that being said, if I get down to the personal question, really the nitty-gritty of it is, personally then, why do I struggle at times hearing his voice in here in the now? Why? And this is some of the questions I had to seek God and ask him, like, God, what causes seasons of drought in my life where I am just literally feel like I'm starving for the voice of God and, and, and things seem just really dry at times. I'm in a dry place. And, and I can't answer that question for you. I don't know maybe why you might be, or maybe some of you aren't, and praise the Lord. You know what, I'm not saying, I'm not speaking that over you guys, but I know in my own personal journey in this quest to listen to the Lord's voice, even in a deeper capacity, there's times where I have to pass through dry places. But the amazing thing is, is this. I don't know why you're there, but I can speak something into you now. You are, you are not intended to stay there. Amen? Even though God maybe will take us through a dry season, it's only for us to pass through. Just like the Israelites, when God says, you're going to the promised land, and your journey is through it, not in it. Amen? So a season of silence is not meant to be, we're not meant to or designed or created 
to remain in it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ himself has changed our location. He has changed our address. And even more than that, even more than having this incredible promise of his presence and and, 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 and being placed in, in, in places of abundance. We even have a promise that he says that even when we do walk through the hard times, the tough times, the real times of living, where we are, we're faced with this question right before us, looking square into our eyes, you know, do you really believe that? His word says that he'll be there right with us. He'll walk through those hard times with us. Amen? never leaves or forsakes you. Amen? We have a travel companion in this. So five ways to tune in the voice of God. And I'm just going to be, these are five ways I'm, I'm learning in my own personal journey on how to really tune in his voice in my life. And I tried to make it kind of like a way that would be easy to remember. So I created it in a way that I felt like the Lord spoke to me is a parental voice. Now, maybe you guys will relate with this. But here's five things that I've heard my parents say to me. <laughs> Number one, have you ever heard your, your parents say, I'm waiting, waiting on you? There's one. Or when you're ready? Or... You already know what I'm going to say. Here's another one. Who's in charge anyway? Who's in charge here? And then the fifth, the right channel. You need to be hooked up to the right channel. So the first I'm going to talk about is I'm waiting. My mom would tell me this all the time when I was a kid. And I was, you know, I was a little bit of a rascal when I was younger. And I really like to push buttons. Were any of you guys button pushers when you were kids? <laughs> yeah? Okay. I was a button pusher. So <laughs> if I knew there was a button to be pushed, I had to push it. On the elevator, I would be the kid pushing all the buttons all the way down. We'd stop at every floor just because there was a button to be pushed. And that was me as a kid. So my mom many times would have to say, like, okay. There's something incredibly important that I need to speak into your life right now, but I need you to be listening. I'm waiting for your undivided attention. How many of you guys have been there with me? (laughs) And all of a sudden you think, oh, I'm in trouble. (laughs) I'm in big trouble right now. Mom's giving me the eyes. You got to shape up and, uh, and listen really quick. But I believe that this is really truly an important feature that God does with us because sometimes we feel like, man, I'm waiting on God. You ever been there? Like, I'm just waiting on God to speak into my life and, and to bring revelation into it, but we are unwilling to give him our undivided attention. Right? We're so busy and distracted with everything else, we're not creating a space for him to be able to speak into our life. We're saying, God, come and speak into me, but speak into me on my terms, in my ways. I'm going to stay busy with whatever I'm doing. I'm going to be involved in whatever I'm involved in, and I'm just not going to be still in your presence and really listen to your heart of the matter. And we just say, you know, I want that booming voice to speak over all of the chaos and the clatter that's around me right now. How many of you guys done that to God? How many maybe are doing that in some areas of your life right now? Am I talking to somebody? Because I'm talking to me. So I'm not, this is not condemnation, but I'm telling you right now that this is an area of my life I need to work on. I do create times and spaces for him, but there are times that God has something incredibly important that he needs to deliver to me, but he is going to wait for me. And it's not until I give him the respect that is due to him and create a time and an opportunity for him to speak into my life and to be still in his presence before he speaks that into me. Amen? 
You guys, you guys connect in here a little bit? And, uh, and I'm going to tell you a, a little example of this. You look at the book in 1 Kings 19, and it talks about this prophet of God. And he's done some incredibly amazing things, Elijah, up to this point. You know, he's faced off with false prophets. Um, he's turned back um, the Israelites to the one and only God. Now he's being hunted by a wicked queen and all of these things. He goes basically um, as a refugee, just in hiding because he's a wanted man. And then he's just struck with depression and he's just seeking God and it seems like he's in a dry place right now. And God sends him to this mountain, Mount Sinai, to meet with him. So he goes to this mountain and he's waiting for God to speak and he's in this cave. And all of a sudden these things happen. Wind starts to crash and just kind of tear apart the rocks. And then all of a sudden, there's an earthquake. And, and then there's fire that rains down. But there's something that is said throughout them things. as Elijah's waiting for God, waiting for his presence, waiting for his voice to be spoken over his life. It says, he, but he wasn't found in those things. And it wasn't until the still, gentle still voice of God whispered into his life that he started to get revelation and God to speak into him. And why was that so? That gentle whisper. It's because that's exactly what Elijah needed. But God was waiting for him to, to let all those other things and distractions to kind of be set aside. And sometimes we got to put our distractions aside and just get alone with God. Not to come up with conclusions. Not to say, God, this is the way I want to do it. But just to honestly go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm your child. You're my father. And I love you. And I know that you love me. And I know that you know what's best for me. And I'm just going to lay all the other distractions aside, and I just need you to speak into my life. And I want to have a willing heart to listen and obey. And when we can get to that place, I truly believe that, that his voice becomes clearer and clearer. And that's how he speaks to us today. He's, re, he's set aside that place for us. It was a foreshadowing of how... God desires to speak to his children. Jesus modeled that. Early in the morning, right? Early in the morning, before all of a sudden all the pressures and stresses and anxieties of living start to weigh on your mind, you get this opportunity to, to rest and hit that reset button. And early in the morning, before all those other things are clamoring for your attention, Christ decided to just get real and get honest and listen to the Father's heart. And that's where we need to be. Amen? Amen. So the second is when you're ready. And, I, and, and I'm going to just kind of you know, have to jump into this a little bit. But have you ever gone to a friend before? Maybe, or, or maybe this has happened to you. And you go and you ask a friend. So you say, hey, you know, I really need your opinion or, or some counsel on this thing that I'm going through. But really, in all reality, is you're just looking for them to fortify what you've already made up, you know, right? You've already made your decision up. And you're just looking for some support, in it, right? And all of a sudden, when that friend gives you their opinion that differs from you, you kind of walk away from it like, what do they know anyway? <laughs> right? You ever been there? Right? Okay. How often do we do that with God? Think about that. I mean, we know this scenario. We live in this scenario at times. You know, I know that I do that way too much. It's just like I've already come up with the answer. But I'm going to go ask somebody anyway. And then if they give me the answer, hallelujah. You know, the, you know, the Lord's working in their life, and I, and I receive that. Amen. Let's move forward. But if somebody really speaks honestly about that situation and it's really challenging me to think in a different way, it's just like, 
I wasn't expecting that. And we discredit that, right? But the Word says that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than ours. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are His ways higher than ours. Right? And at times, we're afraid. We're absolutely terrified to hear what He has to say about the situation because it pushes us out of our comfort levels. Or, you know, we, we create these little pockets of comfort that we know how to operate in because we know what we're going to expect. One plus two equals three. And we already know how, how the re, what's going to result from that. But when all of a sudden we get into other areas that we just don't know how that's all going to play out and we have to walk that out in faith, all of a sudden we get, we get pushed out of those comfort zones. Right? But God is saying, when you are ready to really listen to me, just like in Grief Share, I remember, you know, we ask people all the time, how are you today? And the person just says, good, even if they're not good. They say good just because it's kind of a conditioned response. They don't really care how I feel, but I'm just going to give them what they want to hear anyway. But it's not until, like, Pastor Gordon was really good, but no, how do you really feel? I really want to know what's going on inside. And when we do that with God and we say, God, how do you feel about the situation? What do you have to say about it? And stop blocking him out because that's what we're doing. We just want the, con the conditioned answer and we don't really want to know the truth of the matter. God does not enter into arguing with us to do the right thing but he waits for us to want to do the right thing. God isn't going to get into some major dispute with us. He'll patiently wait it out until we realize that we need his guidance in our life. When you are ready. I felt like even in prayer this morning, the Lord kind of revealed this to me. Proverbs 9, 7 says this. It says, do not... Correct the, scoff, the scoffer or a fool. It says, because it produces shame and harm. It says, lest he hate you. is literally what the, the um, word of God says. When you go to correct a fool, it says, don't rebuke a fool, fool because they'll hate you for it. He says, but if you rebuke a wise man, he'll love you. And the Lord knows this. And I, I believe that in a way... The Lord is speaking into our lives and teaching us kind of his character. How many, and I have to ask myself, how many areas, and, I, and I'm just going to be honest with you, because this is a personal journey I'm taking you on with me right now, because these things are real in my life. Like, for real, I do this. And I really think for real, we all do this at some capacity with God. So I want to challenge us in the way we approach God. And how we listen to him. Because I'm just really being honest with you because this is true. Like, like I go to the Lord, I want wisdom, Lord. Give me wisdom. But I'm the fool. I'm playing the fool's part. Because I really don't want to hear it. And how many areas in my life am I operating out of foolishness? How many areas? And the Lord's going to say this. The Lord's going to say, you know what? I'm just going to wait until you're ready. And if, if, if it has to come all the way to the season of reaping before he's ready, I'll wait it out. But the Lord doesn't desire for us to enter into a season of reaping. He wants to spare us from that. Reaping of foolishness. But we have to be ready to listen to him. And to be honest with him. And to even have a repentant heart at times. And say, God, I know that, you know, I know that this is silly. You know, I kind of learned from my back just this week, you know. Some things that we do just aren't pleasing to God. And then we have to kind of walk that out. But God wants to spare us from that. Only if we would be able to say, God, Give me a spirit of discernment to see ahead of those things. 
before that season comes, that reaping of foolishness, so that I would be corrected before then. Amen? And just to be honest and say, God, I am ready to hear from you. And I am will willing to, to invest whatever you need me to do to make the appropriate changes. Because when we get honest with them and we're really there and we say, God, just I want you to clean this thing up because I am a wreck. And we are at times. And just say, I need, I need you. Help me. Show me. Reveal to me. I'm ready. God's going to say, now, that's when I can work. Right? Now you're operating out of wisdom. And you'll love me for it. He's got so many good things in store for us. Amen? Corinthians says the same thing. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are what? Perishing that will reap the reward of their foolishness in rejecting Christ. There is foolishness that is happening in this world. And there is a consequence to that foolishness. But it goes on to say, but to those who are being saved, to those who exercise the wisdom of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and say, God, I want you to motivate me to be led by you, it says it's the very power of God. On to salvation. Amen? It's powerful. And I'm going to close up. I'm going to wrap this up. But there's, two, there's a couple other ones. You already know what I'm going to say. Number three. You already know. Have you ever had, you ever, as a parent, you know, your kid comes up to you and say, Dad, I, I, I know what you're going to say, but, <laughs> you know, I already know what you're going to say, but maybe I can convince you some other way of looking at it. And, and we do that with God at times, right? But God has given us his word. And you know what? The two will never, never conflict each other. And if we build our life off of his word, we are, the Bible says we are wise. And we have a solid foundation. Amen? There's a law of confirmation that talks about in 1 John. It literally says, there's a witness on earth right here in living today. Is what, what the word's saying, that there is a witness right now that God has presented. And it says, these things agree with each other. They are one. And it says, the spirit, the water, which is the word, and the blood. None of them will contradict each other. So if you get to the point where you're, th you're thinking, well, you know, the word really is telling me not to engage in this or, 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 or to live this way or, or to involve myself with these people or, or, or relationship or whatever it may be, and we try to argue that point with God, he's already given us his word. And we're just going before him and saying, God, I know what you're going to say, but... We're not going to change his mind. His word has already been spoken, and it's eternal. Amen? The word perfects the love. The, the Bible says the word perfects the love of the Father in us. Man, that's powerful. You want, you want, you want your, 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 your daddy's love to be perfected in you? Live out the word. Live it out. Amen? It will be perfected. The word is a beacon of hope and truth. It is a compass and a point of reference. The other night, I went camping with the boys, and I got lost in the woods. How good of a camper am I, right? You know? I'm like, all right, I'm going to go back to the house and get some stuff. I got turned around in the woods. I'm like, I have no idea where I am, and it's pitch dark, you know? But the word acts as that beacon. As I looked up, I could see the moon through the, through the trees, so I kind of knew my bearings, and I kind of knew which direction was uh, that way. So I knew to just kind of keep ha keeping that to my right side of me as I traveled, and then eventually I was going to hit the road. So, but the word does that. That, that word is, is a compass in our life. And if we can use that word to guide and direct us, it will always lead us out of dangerous situations. Amen? Amen. Two others. And I'm, I'm going to wrap up. Who's in charge here? The other day I was praying and I was asking the Lord for something. And 
And, and really, like, I was just like, Lord, I really need to hear your voice in this situation. And as I was praying, the Lord was just like, he felt, I felt like I'm saying, who's in charge? How is that, is that prayer serving you or is it serving me? Now I was corrected. There's a place of reverence when we go before our Lord and Savior. Should that we protect that and have a reverence for him. And to say, just as Jesus did in the garden, Lord, your will is the most important thing in my life. What you have to say about it. And I want to be your servant. And I'm not going to get these things mixed up. I'm not putting the cart before the horse. Amen? We got to make sure that we're serving the Lord and listening to him and not telling him what to do. (laughs) There's a place where we can petition and we can ask and even have boldness and confidence and know that he is our provider. But we still need to do that with reverence. Amen? I, I, my time is up. The bell has dung. <laughs> Dang it, I knew that was going to be fire. <laughs> I knew I should have made it 11.15. <laughs> All right, this is it. And last but not least is the right channel. There's going to be a lot of people in this world today that are going to say they hear God's voice. But the word states it clearly that the only way we hear his voice is through the channel of his son, Jesus Christ. If it's not glorifying him, if it's not exalting him as Lord, then I guess what? We're on the wrong channel. Amen.